Hello everyone, welcome to the Evil Empire. I'm your host, Evil Empire, and this week in the historic feature we have Red, ba Red Black Pyromancer. Uh, we're basing our deck on Wilberto Molina's 5th place deck from the MTGA Arena Zone Historic Open number 8 that occurred last weekend, uh, the 15th and 16th of August. But we've made a few changes that I'm going to go over, and uh, we're going to play this deck in best of one ranked, although I am leaving the sideboard for people who like to play best of three. So the four changes that we made from, well, five changes actually, that we made from Wilberto Molina's list is, uh, number one in the mana base, we have a, a Canyon Slough that's going to allow us to get a little bit um, cycling, a little bit of cycling, and a little bit um, extra flexibility compared to uh, Molina's list had four Temple of Malice. And we've also switched out uh, two Heartless Act from the main deck to feature two Call of the Death Dweller uh, in the main deck. I just didn't feel like there was enough uh, reanimation spells uh, in, in the main deck. And then the big get from Amonkhet, of course, is Claim Fame, uh, which is a split card, which also, like Call of the Death Dweller, is going to allow us to return creatures uh, with uh, certain CMC back to the battle uh, field from the graveyard. Uh, we've also, and this is our last addition uh, to Molina's deck, we've also added two Priests of the Forgotten Gods uh, as a way to make opponents sacrifice creatures, make mana, and draw a card. Um, for that for that one, we switched out, uh, I believe that was one Shock, and we also switched out one of the Croxa to go down to three of the Croxa. Uh, so that's really our only set of changes, otherwise it's exactly the same. Uh, the card that's powering this deck, especially when you're facing control decks or combo decks, uh, the one that's really good to be able to flash back with the Arcanist is Thoughtseize. Uh, this was another huge pickup for this deck, and it makes Young Pyromancer just that much better uh, with another one, uh, one mana spell in the deck. Um, so we've made a couple of changes in the sideboard, including one Priest, and adding an Innocent Blood, and cutting out the Alpine Moons, which were in the deck for uh, the sake of the Field of the Dead um, matchup, but with Field of the Dead getting the axe uh, on Monday the 24th of August, we're going to end up uh, not really needing that plan. So if we face any Field of the Dead decks in the ranked queue, that'll be unfortunate, but to be honest with you, it's not been all that popular in the middle and lower ranks to play Field of the Dead. Um, there's a lot of different archetypes that are being played in Historic right now, so um, hopefully we won't run into it, but we'll see. Alright, so that's it for the deck tech. Uh, essentially what we're trying to do here is just aggro the opponent out. This is a red-black aggro deck with a little bit of a, a different angle, having Lurus as the companion, and a, a few different ways to reanimate in the main deck. So that's the plan for our Red Black Pyromancer deck that's based on the Wilberto Molina build uh, that he took to a fifth place finish last weekend. So let's take it into the queue and see how it does. All right, we're going to go to our first match now. Uh, let's see how we do in the first game tonight. Oh, and just as a heads up, we're going to have some Amonkhet pack openings later. So stick around for 10 pack openings. So if you'd like to stick around after the games, we'll open a bunch of packs, a uh, 10 pack opening at the end of the video before the outro. Actually, I'll probably do it after the the outro as a way of concluding. Alright, let's get started. Looks like we drew the Arcanist and a Croxa to get started with and a Stitcher Supplier. Stitcher Supplier are a really key card in the deck, so happy to draw this and have that BR1 drop of choice here. Although, of course, it's very tempting to go with the Knight of the Even Legion. Uh, we'll get that down turn two and get that attacking on turn three when we actually have three mana to be able to pump it anyway. So, okay, so we mill the claim fame and a dreadhorde arcanist and call the death dweller. Okay. Okay, 
Okay, playing against a mm, either Gruel or Mono Green deck, probably. One or the other. So we're gonna go tap land and then attack. Could probably put that away. I don't think we need any more land at this point. Go to attacks, get in with the Stitcher Supplier. They're not going to block. And that'll be our turn two. Let's see if they have the three mana ramp payoff to get to five. Okay, green white, interesting. That's the test and champion. Okay, looks like we're playing some kind of green white enchantments deck. So they're gonna start drawing cards next turn with the champion. What's our pl best play here? Uh, probably just get in, right? And then we'll see what the opponent says about us getting in. Okay, the opponent says no blocks, so are we going to be doing stuff post-combat, or should we pump? I think we're going to be doing stuff post-combat, right? Yeah. So let's get down the Kroxa. And get an idea of what they're doing from their discard here. Probably going to be like a um, Sentinel's Eyes will be discarded here, something like that. They're going to have a bunch of little cantrippy tot. Oh, okay, just a forest. That puts a counter on our knight. That's good. Now we're going to get the, the Vanishing Light on the knight. Okay. We're going to have access to three mana next turn. So they're going to get in, I guess. Getting in with the champion, I think. No. Alright, so we have mana for one of these two. I think it's going to be Young Peasy. The Peasy out there, and then once we've got that there, let's Thoughtseize. Another champion, Enchantress's Presence. Um, I think we just really want to get another champion out of the way. But if we take this, they don't have any more enchantments to play. Yeah, we can maybe try to do that. All right, now we're just gonna try to attack into the, don't want another young CD. Kill this, please. We would like our Croxa back. Nope, the opponent says we know what your plan is. Wasn't wasn't born yesterday. Alright, so the next champion comes down. And a wanderer. But nothing else from the opponent. Okay, interesting. Interesting situation. What's next? I think we probably want to keep filling our graveyard, right? So let's just attack with everything. Uh, maybe not everything. Maybe let's just attack with the supplier. Because that's guaranteed to get in. So. And then let's go Arcanist and Luris into our hand. And then next turn, flashback Thoughtseize. Hope that they don't draw an enchantment, which they didn't do. Okay. So, how do we proceed? How do we proceed? Interesting, interesting. Alright, well first of all, sack this.
submit those five. We'll leave one Arcanist. We'll get rid of the village, right? It should be fine. Okay, that was just the land. And then I don't see much in the way of a good attack here. We'll attack with our Crocs the next turn. Okay, that's really big for them. They draw a couple more cards, and they'll still have three more mana. Or four more mana now with the one that they just drew. Okay, they're gonna play that fast. Sure. Now they can block. So what do we do? Well, we're gonna start by this. See what else we can get in the yard. Okay, a couple of those. Uh, we're gonna claim back one of these priests. We're gonna fame to give it haste. going to activate it to get rid of the elves, I guess. Just do the ones that we made this turn. Okay. Cool. So now we've got another young PZ, which we'll put here. And a fame, which I guess we'll put on the supplier. And then attack with this and this, which they're just going to kill, but it's fine. We want to flashback our thingy and this, and let's just get in as much damage as we can with everything. Six. Okay, so we make them discard everything they have in their hand, which is what we want here. Flashing back Thoughtseize, what this deck loves to do. Okay, it was a land anyway, didn't matter. Now let's see how opponent blocks. Blocks here for them are not great. They die now, yeah. Okay, they managed to stay at one, sure. They are definitely dead next turn though. Yeah, that's fine, you can do that, certainly. We're just gonna get them with the priest activation next turn, so unless they gain life here. Which, there must be an enchantment that gains life, right? Yeah, I mean, the priest activation is, is lethal. Okay, yeah, draw more cards, but still not gaining any life, right? <coughs> yeah, drawing cards, putting counters, but still not gaining any life. So, not sure what the opponent's going to achieve here. We're not going to have to attack, so that's not a problem. Yeah, wow, our opponent is really interested in just going off without winning here, yeah. Okay, well, they had a little fun at the end, but ultimately, Priests of Forgotten Gods would have gotten them in the end. And so we're going to get to our next notch on Platinum Tier 3. Alright, so that's it for our first game. And it was a bit of a grindier, longer one, but we were able to prevail. I uh, think that was a fun one. There was a lot of a lot of good decision points in that one. So, I think you got a sense in that last game how much we need Stitcher Supplier. Uh, because Stitcher Supplier was really the thing that kept, you know, cycling in and out of the battlefield, getting us what we needed into our graveyard, allowing us to, f to bring back Kroxa, so 
it's a key card and I honestly think that with the supplier I wish I had a few more enablers like that okay I've got it in my opening hand again that's great yeah I think we'll stick with this alright so we'll lead with the swamp and the stitcher into Dreadhorde Arcanist on two. Right, we'll supply our mill for us here. Thoughtseize, excellent. Another Arcanist, also excellent for our claim. Yeah, so that looks good for us. Alright, so let's go to attacking. Dragon Skull Summit, Dreadhorde Arcanist. Okay, so, Aggro Mirror. Let's start with this. And then we will also haste it. And get him for five damage and get to cast the shock and a thought seize. So uh, the thought seize is going to go against our opponent, and the shock is going to go, I think, on their hawk. Yeah, so there. And then this will hopefully hit something like a Heliod or a Linden. Trade up a little bit. Okay, we've got some choices here. Um, I think the hardest thing for us to get rid of is this Bosri. But Ranger is also going to be a bit of a problem. Hopefully they don't hit their land drop next turn and, and we'll be okay. Okay, so I think they would have played their land immediately if they had it. Which means they did not hit land drop. And they're deciding what to do. Okay, it was a Daxos. So yeah, did not hit land drop. Alright, so we're going to go to our next turn. Whether or not we take one damage is up to the opponent. We do not. And first things first, let's get our supplier to give us some more fuel. And then we're going to get some cards into the yard. We're going to get a couple into our hand. Excellent. Okay, so Pyromancer is going to be post-combat. The shock is going to be now, and we're just going to flash it back. Uh, wait, cancel. Let's, let's do this pre-combat, because um, we want to get the effect of the triggers of the Arcanist. So then this. And then attack all. We'll get a Village Rites and a Shock. We'll cast the Shock, pointing it here. And we'll Village Rites, getting rid of one of these. And the opponent's going to pack it in at this point. Sensing that they could not come back from that kind of disadvantage. I don't know. I tend to disagree with the opponent here. Um, if we just take a quick look at the battlefield, I feel like if they hit their next land, they're in good shape. I would have at least given it one more draw step to get Linden online. But yeah, them not hitting land drop, I think, was what did it. And the reason why they wanted to pack it at that point was just they didn't have any more land uh, in their in their hand, right? So. Yeah, I mean, Magic can be an unforgiving game. Uh, if you don't if you don't make your land drops, you will not cast your spells. No, we, on the other hand, were well-stocked with mana. <laughs> You're really getting to see the power of Dreadhorde Arcanist at this point, uh, especially when it's combined with 
uh, the young pyromancer, because you're casting all of those things with the arcanist, uh, it ends up being pretty powerful because you get all the cast triggers off of the pyromancer there. So it was a good thing I remembered to play that pre-combat in the last game. Uh, Alright, let's go to the next game. Yeah, I don't, eh. well, I do have two Dragon Skull Summits. Eh. Ugh. Yeah, put it back. Just too slow. Okay, this is much better. Uh, I guess we'll put back Cling to Dust. So it's kind of more of a niche card anyway. And then turn one, Thoughtseize, into turn two... Pyro, or turn to Arcanist probably. Alright, Guild Gate. So a Gate deck from our opponent perhaps. Uh, eh, I guess we have. I guess we really wanted that Cling to Dust after all. Uh, probably the Migration Path. This looks to be the Field of the Dead deck. But what can you do, right? Looks like Cling to Dust is not such a niche card after all, with the, as being with the Euro being Euro being such a ubiquitous card in the format. So we will get to Young Pyro, and then do some fun stuff next turn. Okay, never mind. Visual Bug in our graveyard. I forgot about that. Okay, so we can get it back. Interesting question though is, do we really want to though? I think we just want a young pyro. Uh, but we don't get anything off of it, do we? Alright, then shock. No. Yeah, I think it's just pyro attack for one, as sad as that is. Alright, that's unfortunate, but we can have a better turn next turn. That bazooka bog really got us last turn. Okay. And now we get to cast all these. So starting with this. I'll seize you again. You again. And then let's get more cards, I think. Yeah. to do here. So. Let's get busy drawing more cards and getting more tokens. Another Arcanist is pretty good. Okay, so one unknown card in hand. Do we thought seize it? It's an interesting question. target for this otherwise. Opponent really spinning their wheels here. Um, but I think we I think we're gonna flash back the thoughts here just to be sure that there's nothing they have. Uh, yeah, this one. Cast it right here. Okay, 
Uh, Quench would not have been great anyway. I don't know why they're running it in their deck. It's a bit strange as far as choices go. Alright, so Arcanist. And Priest. And then get pretty close to killing them next turn. Don't know if I actually do, but... So when is the opponent going to be able to bring back Uro right now? Looks like right now. Alright, that's not great. But we can get rid of it, so that's positive. That's one of the reasons I wanted Priest in the deck, is that it's a little bit of virtual removal here. A lot of decks that don't even really bother with the whole multiple creatures thing. Right. Target you. Let's say submit one. Here and here. Add some mana, get back our priest. Give our priest haste. Uh -huh. Now what? Go in for the attack. Here, 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 here. That's six damage. Eight. We come up a little short, don't we? Okay. Uh, probably best to just get in then, right? Or no? No. Let's draw a card, I guess. Yeah, attack, shock the face, make a couple more dorks. Uh, activate. Target. Actually, we can do this on their turn, can't we? And still draw? Yeah. That's fine then. Let's see if they have the wrath. We're not in terrible shape if they wrath us. Is it going to do it? Or are they going to escape shift here? Make a bunch? Yeah, escape shift it looks like. Oh, Fey. Okay. Fey for escape shift? Yeah, that's what it is. No, Fey for time wipe. Okay. Alright, so in response, let's get rid of this. Oh, we don't have haste anymore. Stupid. Stupid, stupid. Well, that's a very silly play that I made then. That's interesting. Well, I think that might be a win, right? Uh, depends what we get if we're smart about it. We need three, so... This... Attack you for the win. Uh, we're going to decline that. Okay, so opponent was able to wrath us by fetching from the sideboard, but the draw off of the village rights was good, even though I made a bonehead play. The deck bailed me out, so playing poorly and still getting wins with the deck. All right, I think we're going to go to the outro section next. So hang out, hang out for the outro, and we will do a 10-pack opening after that. With the impending ban of Field of the Dead on Monday, we have a brand new meta again this month. For historic so it's a pretty exciting time in my opinion and i know a lot of people got very frustrated with the fact that they had to ban uh, again this month in historic um, because they had already kind of prepared uh, for the new field of the dead meta and i've also seen um, other calls you know in particular i saw uh, caleb d um, tweeting that you know he was hopeful that maybe it would just be um, Hour of Promise that was banned instead of Field of the Dead because um, 
I'm guessing be the fact that Hour of Promise really supercharged the deck uh, was one of the things that he most objected to. But from my point of view, I think Field of the Dead is the real problem, and Hour of Promise is the one that I would prefer to be saved uh, for some kind of creative lands combo deck, uh, which I think could be pretty cool. But uh, Field of the Dead is, is, in my opinion, the, the real root of the problem. And once we get rid of that, we're going to be looking at what's competitive in that new uh, metagame, and I think with Thoughtseize being one of the most powerful cards in the entire format, the ability to flash back this card and get free value, uh, flashing it back with Arcanist and then getting free value with the Pyromancer, combined with the alternative late game plan of Croxa, uh, gives you a pretty solid plan in this deck, and I think also uh, one of the cards that you saw be really powerful in this deck is Claim Fame. Um, just being able to return any of your creatures, and then also getting to haste it, that was how we won the, the final game, for example. Um, I also really enjoyed having Priest in the deck, I thought that was a good addition, and we did not get to evaluate Call of the Death Dweller very much. We didn't get to cast it at all, in fact, so not sure if that was the right call to cut that for Heartless Act, but um, I could definitely see situations where Flashing Back, Heartless Act would be better than Flashing Back Call, but Flashing Back Call is possible, because if we're able to use one of our fame. Uh, from the graveyard on our Arcanist and give it plus two, uh, then we can flash back a three mana. So it is possible to flash this back from the graveyard, um, and it does, I think, synergize better with the overall plan than Heartless Act. But So that is um, Wilberto Molina's fifth place finishing deck, a uh, top eight deck from the MTGA Arena Zone uh, Historic Open number eight. I'll be linking his original deck list in the description alongside my deck list, my version of it. And I hope you get a chance to play the deck and enjoy uh, some fun red-black aggro shenanigans. Um, the last thing that we're going to do today is some pack opening. I have 10 packs of Amonkhet. going to do it for this week in the historic feature and we'll look forward to seeing you next week this is evil empire signing off